Not long ago, you met Nathan Casburn, a Mississippi Delta farmer who, because of an accident and other pressures, fell prey to drugs and was nearly conquered by them. Today, another episode of On the Farm, ahead of a follow-up in the weeks ahead. This series is created by MSU Films and producer James Parker. This episode about a third-generation farmer forced to make a hard decision. My farm has been in our family for a little over a hundred years now. We've been a dairy farm for close to 70. We have about uh, 400 head of cattle on the farm right now. We're about 600 acres all, all told. Uh, most of it's pasture and crop land uh, that we have our cows on and that we uh, grow crops for to feed our cows. Everything we do on our farm in raising our cows, everything we grow, we grow for our cows. We don't have any crops that we sell off the farm. It all stays here. I have a pretty packed daily schedule and it's, it, I kind of tell people it's, every day is the same, but every day is different. It's a, it's a tough, grueling daily schedule for folks who are not used to it, especially on small farms and family farms like the, like the Gilmers. Typically, it's a very early morning uh, milking, the first milking is very early. Uh, in the Gilmer's case, it's, uh, it starts at 3 a.m. My father and I each get up around 3 a.m. and we come to the milking barn. We're milking cows usually by a quarter till four. And so me and him will take care of that and we'll finish somewhere around 6.30. And then they milk twice a day, so they'll milk again at 1 p.m. But in the, in the meantime, between three and one, and after the second milking, there's the rest of the farm chores that go on. We really start doing a little bit of whatever has to be done on the farm. We might have to you know, work cows, you know, bring them up from one pasture to give them vaccinations or move them to another pen or some afternoons I'll be on a tractor, if, if depending on what time of year it is. If we're harvesting something or we're planting something, I might be doing that, but we don't shut down. It's, it's every day, 365 days a year. Like any business, it's not just one challenge we face. They, they kind of come from all directions. The most obvious is the price of milk price of milk has not been good uh, for the last several years. It's always been somewhat of a roller coaster. The milk prices, uh, again, fluctuate uh, wildly here recently. If you don't know if you're going to be making $22 a hundred weight or $11 a hundred weight this month or next month, it's hard to plan your financial uh, aspect of the business when your your prices are fluctuating uh, like that and they're selling into those prices every day because they're milking every day selling milk you know pricing milk uh, as it comes you know throughout these wild swings 
you know, whatever your milk price is, is what your milk price is, regardless of what you, what you produce. And, and from that is what you have to pay your feed bill, pay your labor, uh, make uh, bank payments if you have those, if you're trying to pay on equipment or facilities or any other capital that you had to, to borrow to buy for your dairy. And there may come a point in the time that if your farm is not producing enough milk, you may not have a market for it. Uh, so that's another economic uh, strike that, that a lot of us have against us. You know, for instance, there's, there's probably six or seven different farms on our milk route that, you know, it's, it's taking that many of us to fill up a milk tanker uh, to get to market. The, the smaller farms, and by the numbers, are, are going out of business. In Alabama, where Will is, in 2003, there were 110 dairies, farms. Today, there's 25. Same thing in Mississippi. In 2003, there are 270. Today, there's 60. So the, the consolidation is moving towards larger farms, 1,000 cows and more. Uh, and so the smaller farms, the 100 and less uh, or fewer cows, uh, are really uh, not able to uh, stay in business because of this, because of the price fluctuations and as well as the costs. Farms disappearing in the southeast means that our infrastructure is, is at risk. You know, dairy suppliers are not as numerous as they once were, so if we need supplies or we needed somebody to, to work on a piece of equipment, We've got to get somebody from further away to do it, which impacts our business from a time standpoint, a money standpoint. If we have a critical piece of equipment that breaks down, we either have to be able to fix it or at least fix it good enough to, to, to limp it along or, or have to have old equipment around that we can rob parts off of or just have to be willing to wait for somebody to come service it and, and know that that's pro we're probably going to uh, lose a milking shift on account of it. Even though we know there's always going to be a demand for milk there, it makes it hard to see where we fit in and how we can survive long term when it feels like you're just what you're doing you're just sitting on an island doing it all by yourself and nobody or there's nobody around to support you like suicide rate on dairies is very high it's bad, and, and a ton of that comes from the feeling of, I've let my family down. You know, we've been doing this for however many generations, and I'm failing, and can't, can't deal with it. That's always a, uh, a concern of the generation that's taken over, is that I don't want to be the one, you know, I don't want to be the one that, that has to get rid of the farm. But it's with the way the times are now, a lot of cases that's happening. You bear that sense upon yourself that, okay, this was, you know, this is what my father's done his whole life. This is what my grandfather started. His parents started the actual, the farm itself. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here at a fourth generation on this land trying to make this thing go. For our family legacy to continue, it comes down to me. How am I gonna carry this forward, you know, for the next 30, 40 years? At some point in time, if we continued dairy farming, we'd have to invest in new, new milking equipment, we'd have to invest in new feeding equipment, we'd have to invest in new facilities to house our animals. 
So I had to ask myself, am I more committed to dairy farming or am I more committed to our farm? I live where I want to live and I'm working where I want to work. And to continue doing that, that means I'm going to need to farm a little bit differently in the future. That led to the decision and, you know, and, and talking with my father and whatnot to begin transitioning out of dairy farming into uh, raising beef cattle. When you frame your mission statement like that, there are a lot more alternatives open for you. So they can transition to something else. Maybe it's a row crop farm, maybe it's beef cattle, maybe it's agritourism. There are so many other options available now that you've decided we want to maintain the farm, family farm rather than the, just the dairy. It's less capital intensive. Uh, the, uh, the equipment that we needed, it would be less specialized. There would be more of an aftermarket for it uh, if, we, if we wanted to sell some of it. And there's always going to be a market for beef cows, good or bad, there's always going to be a market for beef cows. And that, that was kind of that, that sense of relief and liberation and peace I got that, okay, I'm now allowing myself a lot more options to be successful in the future than just trying to keep my focus on this one very narrow aspect of agriculture. Very important, if you or someone you know is in emotional crisis, call or text 988 anytime for confidential free crisis support.